Hello everybody, it's Mystic and welcome back to my library. This is my review of Beacon Pines, which is a super cozy horror game. I didn't believe it at first when I played it because I was like, you know, there's cute little woodland creatures. The art style is just really just very cozy looking. The narrator has a very nice cozy voice. I, I'm saying cozy a lot, but it it is. And I was surprised. It is actually a horror game. Not like super jump scary, oh my God, I'm never sleeping again horror game, but there were definitely some kind of spooky elements in the game. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. I wanted to do a review of this game. I actually streamed it on Twitch a few weeks ago. And I mean, spoiler alert, I absolutely love this game. Hands down, probably one of the best games that I've played in a while, especially a visual novel. It was just so good. And it's not just a horror game. It's very heartwarming. There's a really, really good story to it. There are some heavy moments at times and obviously some kind of creepy moments at times. But overall, the story was just absolutely amazing. And I really hope that Hiding Spot Games comes out with another game like this. I'm not saying I want a sequel to Beacon Pines, but I do want to have another game in this same style. So let's talk a little bit about that first before I get more into the story and everything. This game is a visual novel and it is literally a visual novel. The whole thing takes place in a book and you're kind of like reading it chapter by chapter while the narrator is narrating it to you. And it's a very like choose your own adventure style game because there are choices that you can make that are going to affect what path you're going to take on the story. And like if you get a bad ending, it's not done. You can go back and change your choices and try something else and keep going. And actually, that's kind of something I really liked about the game because, yes, it is a choose your own adventure. You are going to get bad endings. And I actually encourage everybody to like go through and do everything that they possibly can because there is so much to this game. And I actually 100 percented it on Steam. I've got all of the achievements. I don't do that very often because I just don't have time to go through and get every achievement. This game was one of the ones where I was just like, I need to get all of these achievements. I need to see every little square inch of this game and its story. I wanted to learn everything that I could and I did it. And honestly, it was very fulfilling to do that. There's not a ton of achievements, so it's not like it's going to take you a million years to do it. I think I have something like 16 hours in the game on Steam, and that's with streaming it, which always takes a little bit longer. So it is not a very long game by any stretch of the imagination. And you could, if you're not streaming it and you're not trying to get like literally every little bit of information, probably finish the game in about seven or eight hours. So it's not like one that's going to take you a really long time. And I think that's the other reason I really appreciated this game for what it was, because it was just it didn't like overstay its welcome, I feel like. And I just, I really liked it. It was like reading a book. It was like reading a cozy mystery slash horror book. And I was just very much there for that. It was such a good, well-written game that it felt like I was reading a book. And for somebody like me who does like reading, although I'm in a little bit of a reading slump right now, um, this was this was honestly perfect for me. I I really wish there were more games out there like this because it was just so well done. So let's talk a little bit about other things about the game that were just incredible. Let's talk about the story because obviously that was a big part of the game. And you're basically playing the role of Luca and he is a little I actually never really thought too much about what Luca's species was. They're all woodland creatures or animals, like little cute animals. Um, one of the other main characters is a cat. There's also people that are dogs. There's bunnies. There's birds. Like it's all it's all a bunch of cute animals. And so when you go into this game, hearing that it's a horror novel, your horror game rather, you're going to probably be like Mystic. No, this is not. It can't be like, look at this. It's adorable. But no, it does have its scary moments. And that I think that it was well done. It wasn't overdone. It wasn't like 
you know, I was going to be scared for forever. It had elements that were scary and they were perfect where they needed to be. They weren't like just there for the sake of it. It was it was perfect. You're playing the role of Luca, whose father has recently passed away and his mother has gone missing. So now he's living with his grandmother and a lot of really strange things have started happening around the town. And Luca and his best friend Rolo have started noticing it. So they start kind of going on a little quest to figure out what's going on. And as the chapters go on, more and more of the story gets revealed. Even when you get the bad endings, you are going to have the story revealed to you in pieces. So like I said, it's very important to get both the good endings and the bad endings. And I actually think you can't finish the game without getting all of the bad endings. So make sure you're doing all of it. The characters in this game, I loved them. I loved all of them, even like the the bad characters, the villains. I just think they were so well written. And honestly, the three friends, Luca, Rolo, and Beck, were probably my three favorite characters. They all had their own unique personalities, and I just loved them. They all had their own role to play. Like Luca was the one that was just a little bit more quiet and reserved and tried to like think about everything that was going on. He was also the main character, so he had a lot, a much more bigger role to play. He was also just a little sad because, you know, he had a really tough life the last couple of years, and it's understandable. Rolo was definitely the comic relief, but he wasn't annoying at all. Like sometimes when you have a comic relief in any form of media, they can be a little much. I don't think that that was the case for Rolo at all. Like his jokes hit when they needed to hit so that even during the heavier scenes, it wasn't as heavy and it helped to like get the story moving. I just loved him. He was probably of the three friends, my favorite because he was just so silly and goofy. And I really think that the game needed him to do what it needed to do and do what it needed to do well. And then there was Beck, who is the new person in, or the new cat in town. She's so like incredibly smart and she's like the sassy one that's going to go around and like tell people off for doing things wrong. And she also had a great role to play as well. She did a lot of things that I think were very smart that I don't know that the other two would have thought to do. The story itself was just absolutely incredible from start to finish. There is an overarching mystery throughout the entire game that, like I said, you kind of learn in pieces as you go. And I was literally guessing the entire time. When I tell you that I was streaming this and like talking about my theories to chat and we were all like just trying to figure it out. We were taking notes. We were sharing notes. We were coming up with theories. We had conspiracy theories coming out of our ears and we still did not get it right. That's what I loved so much about this game. The mystery is so good and it will keep you guessing the entire time and you probably aren't going to get it. And that's what was so good about this because I love it when a mystery can really stump me. And I was going hard on this mystery, trying to figure it out trying to see what was going on. I feel like I got a little bit of it right towards the end, but like the whole reveal was not something that I saw coming. And it was just, it was so good. And I even have some reactions of mine where I'm posting or where I'm reacting to the ending. And like, you can genuinely see when it hit me, just what exactly what was going on. And I have a whole like video of my endings reactions. Obviously, don't watch that if you're going to play it because it is huge spoilers. But if you've already played it, you should go check that out because I feel like especially at the end of the game when things were starting to really come together, when it hits me, it hits me. So yeah, story was hands down incredible. Definitely one of my favorites in a long while. As far as the music goes, the music was incredible. I actually kind of want to go on Bandcamp because I believe you can buy the soundtrack on Bandcamp. And I'm thinking about going and buying it because I kind of want to just listen to this whenever. Like I want to listen to it in my car. I want to listen to it when I'm cleaning. I want to listen to it when I'm cooking. It's a very chill soundtrack. There's obviously different parts in the game that are a little bit more intense. So the music gets more intense. I also have to give a huge shout out to the narrator who apparently we looked this up on stream. She has not actually done other narrating jobs before this. I think she's only been in one other game and it was a minor role. So this is her first time narrating. She is incredible. Her name is Kristen Mies or Mize. I'm not sure if I'm saying her name right. And I apologize if I'm not. 
She was so good. Everybody in chat kept saying that she needs more roles. So hopefully, hiding spot, if you're listening, <laughs> if you do another game like this, definitely bring her back on as a narrator. I think she was just so good. We really liked her a lot and we kept saying that we were shocked that this was her first narrating job. The last thing I want to talk about is the overall look and feel of this game. It is so beautiful. The the art style, the drawing. I think I read on Steam that it's hand drawn too. It very much has that like Disney kind of cartoony vibe to it. And I feel like that fit the vibe of this game very well because it kind of lulls you into this false sense of security that it's just going to be a cozy game with a cozy story. And that's definitely not the case, which I guess is kind of the case with Disney movies, too, when you think about it, because, yes, they're cute and cozy, but there's also a pretty dark story in a lot of them. So I think that that fit really well. The characters were all super well done in, in their styles and the scenery was gorgeous. The actual like turning the pages of the book as you're continuing the story was also just a nice touch to the game that really just made you feel like you were reading a book. So yeah, that wraps up my review of Beacon Pines. As I said, this was an incredible journey. I absolutely adored this game from start to finish. It was so good. And I feel like it's a very just underrated gem on Steam. It just flies under the radar and I feel like more people need to play it. So if you've seen this review and you are an old intrigued to play the game, I definitely recommend that you play it. Even if you can't find it on sale, it is well worth the money to play this game, even if it's not on sale. This game will put you through so many emotions. It's going to make you happy. It's going to make you sad. You will cry. I cried. You will be a little scared. You're going to be a little angry. But all in all, the story was just incredible. The game itself was incredible. And I just wish that more people would play this because it is such a phenomenal game. So with that in mind, I'm going to be giving it five books out of five, which is the highest score that I give to any of the games that I review. And I just, yes, please play it. It's so good. I do want to ask, this is a little bit different of a review than I normally do. Usually they're a little bit more scripted and I'm not on camera. I'm kind of doing my reviews a little bit like how I do my booktube videos where I'm just kind of sitting and chilling and talking. Nothing is scripted. I'm just kind of yapping about how much I love the game. So I'm curious what you think about this kind of review. I actually definitely prefer this to scripting things. I have realized I don't like scripting my reviews. It's not for me. I like to be a little bit more casual, a little bit more chill. So I think I would like to consider doing this more. So let me know what you think. I hope you enjoy. And don't forget to follow me on Twitch as well, because I do stream there. I streamed this whole game there. I do a lot of like cozy games over on Twitch. I'm currently doing Stardew and my time at Porsche. So yeah, I hope you all have a great day and I will see you later. Bye.